And two years ago, the Green family donated money to the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation, named after the Prime Minister's late father. The relationship between the Trudeaus and the Green family goes back to the 1970s. The trip was, we're told, cleared by Canada's Ethics Commissioner. But what are the optics of this story for Justin Trudeau? Let's bring in Tom Mulcair, CTV political commentator, former leader of the NDP, of course. Tom, I know you were listening in to a lot of what was going on there. First of all, your, your takeaway of what we heard. I think that uh, Mr. Poiliev is having a little bit too much fun. Some of this is quite a stretch. There are serious issues to be discussed around the Trudeau Foundation, in particular concerning China's interference in Canadian elections and its attempts to curry favour with the, the Trudeau government by making that donation to the foundation. With regard to the trip, it's been correctly pointed out, you just repeated it, but the ethics commissioner said he could take the trip. But the problem is one of perception. It is a time of very high inflation. Canadians are suffering. They're having trouble paying their groceries. Mr. Trudeau can prom promise to help them a bit with that. But the average Canadian family is going through a rough time right now. When you see the pictures of that compound, of those incredible villas, they rent, uh, Todd, for as much as $7,000 US per night. So I think that that's where Mr. Poitiev was trying to go when he was coming up with a figure there saying, well, are you going to reimburse that amount? But because they are friends under the law, Mr. Trudeau was allowed to go. But it brings everything else back. It brings back the $6,000 a night hotel uh, at the time of the Queen's funeral. Uh, he didn't have to stay in a hotel that was $6,000 a night. It brings back the Tofina Be Tofino Beach House when he took off uh, for that family break that he decided that he'd rather have instead of respecting the day that he had set aside for truth and reconciliation with our First Nations. So it's a very difficult thing. Uh, Mr. Trudeau has repeatedly made the same mistake. There are so many mistakes to make. Why does he like doing the same one? It brings back the Aga Khan Island visit. That was an, a visit that was illegal. Mr. Trudeau broke the law, and that's not my opinion. That's the opinion of the ethics commissioner who looked at that. So he should have learned. The people around here, I'm sure, I'm really sure, they're, he's got great people around him. They must have said, boss, you know, go on a ski holiday near your, your family's place in the Laurentians. Do something like that. But going to a place like this, once those pictures come out of what this place was like that you went to on your family holiday, people will say you're disconnected from the average Canadian. And you know what? That's what people are saying right now. Yeah, so this narrative, and I know the Conservatives have been pushing it, that Justin Trudeau is an elitist, that he's out of touch with most Canadians. I know some Liberals do worry about that perception. And you, as a longtime former politician, know, you know, anytime you're explaining, you're losing. Right. And, and Mr. Trudeau, like anybody else, by the way, deserves a break. He deserves to be able to go on holidays with his families. And I think on that part, Kualiev was being careful, because if it ever did come to pass that he became Prime Minister... He's going to take holidays too and need his full retinue and need his security detail and have the same types of expenses. This is the thing of when you're in opposition and when you're in power. I remember Donald Trump criticizing Barack Obama for playing golf a few times when he was uh, president of the United States. And I think that Trump went on to play golf every other day. So such is life in politics. But Trudeau is one way or the other trying to clear off the debris from the runway so that he can eventually take off for an election. Todd, you know, we're well into our second year of this minority mandate in Canada. Minority governments last about two years. So Trudeau's going to be looking very closely at the fall as a possible takeoff date for, for that election. And this thing shouldn't be dragging on. He's done his best to stretch it out. He gave David Johnson a mandate to come back at the end of May with a first answer. Then somehow contrived to say, well, he'll come back around Halloween, end of October with the rest of it. He's trying to stretch it out so that the inevitable Commission of Inquiry into Chinese government interference in Canadian elections can take place without hurting him. But the more it stretches out, the more it hurts him. And he's in a bit of a, an uncharacteristic quandary because Trudeau and, again, the incredible team around him, they're very good at issue management. They're very good at handling this sort of thing. Trudeau's lines today in question period were weak. It, it was not him. He tried to, to put on a bit of a show there, but it, it didn't carry the day. Kualiev is getting stronger. As, as time goes by. And, and Trudeau is starting to show that he's tired of listening to his own answers. That's the impression that he gives me anyway. Hey, one last thing. If you were advising him, uh, you know, in a different world, what would be the number one thing you would say to Trudeau to try and clear the air over this whole, you know, Trudeau Foundation and, and you know, all of this, this, this Chinese stuff that's swirling now around the Liberals? Well, well, the Trudeau Foundation stuff is part and parcel of the Chinese government interference dossier. So that's why it's such a problem, even though David Johnston is, is a friend and he's somebody I backed when he got named to that. When the board resigned last week and 
the CEO resigned over this Chinese check and all that money coming in, you know, from these sketchy sources, it, it was quite clear that Johnston was no longer the person who could do the, the whole look at this. And I'm convinced Johnson's going to have no choice but to, to recommend a commission of inquiry, but I think he should have passed the baton to somebody else since then. If I were advising Trudeau, I would say, boss, get ahead of this thing, stop reacting to it. And the only way for him to get ahead of it is to call a commission of inquiry. And then every time you get a question, you say, that is sub judice. It is being considered right now by this very formal institution that we have in Canadian law, which is a royal, we used to call it a royal commission, a com full commission of inquiry with the appropriate powers to compel the production of witnesses and documents and the whole bit. Give it there and let it take off. But as long as he's on his back, his back, he's back footed on this thing every time, then he's always going to be on the defensive. That's where he is now, and he's got to get ahead of it. And he hasn't been able to do that so far. I think the real reason was given by Bob Pipe, the lead author of most of those Globe and Mail articles, when he said this. He said the reason that Trudeau doesn't want a commission of inquiry is because Trudeau knew about the Chinese government inter interference in our elections. He knew it was going to help the Liberals, and that's the main reason why he did nothing about it. I think that that's the bottom line. Tom Mulcair, good to see you, Tom. Always a pleasure. Good to see you again, Todd. All the best.